So I welcome you all on this platform and from today onward we are going to start with a new series that is Prelims Connect. In this series we are going to discuss some of the most important previous year questions and at the same time we are also going to see the probable areas from where the questions can again be framed in the future examinations. Okay. So this is one free initiative which we are going to do on continuous basis from Monday to Friday at the same time. Okay. And in this week we are going to discuss some of the very important questions related to environment section as well as some portions related to geography also. Okay. So this is a free initiative and you can join us on like Mondays to Fridays on the same time on this our YouTube channel. Okay. So today we are here with certain questions from the environment section and you can see here we have one very important question which is which is a continuous trend. UPSC has been asking questions about the institutions which have been made under certain laws. Okay. And here there is one this question which one of the following has been constituted under the Environment Protection Act 1986. Now this is a pattern of question which is continuously being asked. They asked about the laws also, they asked about the institutions also. Okay. And you all know that the answer here is Central Groundwater Authority. That is the answer of this question that yes, this Central Groundwater Authority has been established under the provisions of this Environment Protection Act 1986. Okay. But let us see some other bodies also which have been formed under the various acts. When we are talking about this Environment Protection Act, you can see here, we have got Genetic Engineer Appraisal Committee, then National Ganga Council and Central Groundwater Authorities. These are some of the bodies which have been formed under the provisions of this Environment Protection Act 1986. Okay. Now on the other side, you can see we have again this Wildlife Protection Act and this is very much in news. This Wildlife Protection Act is going to be amended somewhat. And so this was one such law which is there in the news right now. Okay. And here we are again having certain bodies, Wildlife Crime Control Bureau, then we have National Tiger Conservation Authority, then we have Central Zoo Authority and also we are having National Board for Wildlife. These are some of the important bodies which have been formed under the provisions of Wildlife Protection Act 1986. Okay. And on this side again this body Biodiversity Act 2002. This is also in the process of amendment and here also we are having certain bodies like National Biodiversity Authority, State Biodiversity Boards and Biodiversity Management Committees at the district level. Okay. So this is one pattern on which UPSC is asking question. Okay. Now see there is another question. Now this is a question for you. Can you tell me which of the following have coral reefs? We have the areas of Andaman and Nicobar Islands. We have the Gulf of Kutch, we have Gulf of Mannar and Sundarbans. Can you tell me like here we are having four options A 1, 2 and 3 only, B 2 and 4 only, C 1 and 3 only and D 1, 2, 3 and 4. Can you tell me in which of the following areas we can expect coral reefs around the country? Okay. Coral reef and mangroves are two very important ecosystems which are found in the coastal ecosystem of the country. And you will find some relations between them that in which area they are found. So can you tell me the answer of this question? In which area we can expect the coral reefs to be found in India? We are having Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Then we are having Gulf of Kutch. We are having Gulf of Mannar. Then we are having Sundarbans. Anyone? What would be the answer? See, this is a very easy thing. Like uh, UPSC has been asking question in this manner. They ask about the location of different things like even they can ask you about the location of the different type of vegetation which is found in India. So this is one again area where you have to find out where it is found. Okay. When we talk about coral reef, coral reefs are generally surviving in warm water, shallow water which is free from sediments. Okay. So clear and clean water is necessary. Okay. Saline water is necessary for them, warm water is necessary for them. In India, they are found in Andaman and Nicobar Islands. They are also found in Gulf of Kutch region in some amount and even in Gulf of Mannar you can witness this. But when we talk about the Sundarban area, this is the area where a lot of sediments are being deposited by the Ganga and Brahmaputra river okay. and other smaller tributaries of them. Okay. 
so this is one such area which is filled with sediments and all and here we are not having the presence of coral reef so the answer here would be a 1 2 and 3 only okay you can see here you can see in this portion that we are having certain areas you can see in this portion we are having the poor area of india this is the map of coral reef in india in this gulf of kutch region we can see certain coral reefs in the Malwa region, again, you can expect certain coral reef here. Lakshadweep, it is a coral island itself. So, here is again some area where you can see this. Then, Gulf of Mannar, again an area where you can witness the coral reef. But you can see this entire stretch of the eastern coast, where we are having this deltas, like deltas of Ganga and Brahmaputra, deltas of Krishna, Godavari, Mahanadi. In this entire stretch along the eastern coast, we do not witness the coral reefs. Okay. So, these are found on the mainly on the western coast and then again Gulf of Mannar and here in the Andaman and Nicobar. This is the area where we expect the coral reefs in India. On the other hand, we are again having the mangroves in India. Okay. You can see along the eastern stretch, along the eastern coast, we are having prominence of the mangroves in India. You can see this area, Sundarban, Vitarkanika, Mahanadi mangroves, then we have Godavari Krishna Delta mangroves. We are also having Pichavaram Estuary mangroves. And either in the western side also, you can see certain area in Gulf of Kutch. Okay. Certain parts in Mumbai, certain part along the Goa. And then in the areas of Karnataka and Kerala also, you can witness some amount of mangroves. Okay. But the majority of mangroves and the major stretch is found along the eastern coast where we have the formation of Delta. And again here, in the Andaman also, we can witness the extent of mangroves. Okay. So, these are the areas. Yes, you are correct. That answer was C. So, this is the area where we can expect the mangroves in India. And this is the map of corals in India. Okay. Now, let us move to another question. See, there is one more thing which you have to keep in mind right now. Coral reefs have been there in the news, but a new thing has been there in the news in the last one year. And that is a juice anthelid corals. Basically, what has happened? Various researchers have found a juice anthelid corals in the Bay of Bengal region. Okay. Now, what are a juice anthelid corals? Normally, when we are talking about the coral reef, they need juice anthelid also in order to get their food. But a juice anthelid corals are not dependent on the sunlight or the juice anthelid for their food. Rather than that, they simply derive their nutrition or their energy from the planktons which are there. Okay. So, they are different from the juice anthelid based coral reef. Okay. Here, they do not require the sunlight or the juice anthelis for their food. Rather than that, they are dependent on other planktons. Okay. And so, for that matter, they can even be found in the depth of the oceans. Even they can be found up to 1000 meter depth in the oceans. This is the area 200 meter to 10, 1000 meter. This is the area where majority of a juice anthelid corals are witnessed. Okay. Normally, you will find that the coral reefs are found in the shallow region of the oceans. But this can be found in deeper portions also. Okay. So, that is a new species which was there in the news. You should know about it. Okay. Then, we can see one more thing. This question was also there. In which of which of the following can be found as pollutants in the drinking water in some parts of India? Okay. So again, here we are having certain uh, examples: arsenic, sorbitol, fluoride, formaldehyde, uranium. Okay. So can you again answer this question? Which of them can be witnessed as pollutants in the drinking water in parts of India? On one hand, we are having arsenic, sorbitol fluoride, formaldehyde and uranium. And we have the options 1 and 3 only, 2, 4 and 5 only, then 1, 3 and 5 only and D, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay. So now see, when we talk about pollutants in India, let me show you this uh, table. Okay. You can see here, we are having nitrate as a pollutant. Okay. Then we are having this uh, Fluoride also, iron is also there, somewhere salinity is also very high, arsenic can be also witnessed there, lead can be also there, chromium can be there, cadmium can be there. Okay. So, these are certain things which can again be witnessed in India. But now, it has also been very much clear that 
there is also the presence of uranium in India in the ground waters. And this has also been come up in the news right now. Okay. So now when we look at the answer of this question, now when we look at the answer of this question, it should be like arsenic is there, arsenic is there, then fluoride is also there, and then uranium is also there. Okay. So these three things we can witness here. And hence, for that particular reason, we will have the answer as 1, 3, and 5 only. Okay. For a very long time, uranium was not considered as a pollutant in groundwater. But now, there are official pronunciation of this that yes, it is now a pollutant in the groundwater in many states of the country. Okay. So now we will have answer as arsenic, fluoride and uranium. C would be the answer of this question. Okay. So that is one thing which you have to keep in mind now. Okay. Then, again, one more question is here. Consider the following, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxide, oxygen and sulfur dioxide. Excess of which of the following, uh, sorry, excess of which of the above in the environment is our causage of acid rain? Okay. This is again a very simple question and you will find that generally there is this pattern that uh, UPS is asking about the pollutants. Sometimes they are asking about the sources of the pollutant. Like they have asked this question also that what are the sources of emission of sulfur oxides or nitrogen oxides? Then they have even asked about the impact of it. Okay. So here again, we are having one question on the basis of the impact itself that excess of which of the above can lead to acid rain. Okay. Now, can any one of you reply this? What would be the correct answer here? The first is 1, 2 and 3. Second is 2 and 4. 4 only and 1, 3 and 4. So can you give me what would be the answer here? I have got one answer as B. Anyone else? Okay, I have got two answers as B. Okay. See, yes, it is correct that nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides are the, if there is excess of these two gases, then there can be acid rain. Okay. Now, understand here one very important thing. Normally also, the rainfall which is there, it is also slightly acidic in nature. Okay. So, even the normal rainfall is acidic in nature due to the presence of carbon dioxide. Okay. But, when we have excess of nitrogen oxides and sulfur oxides, then nitric acids or sulfuric acids can be formed and it can further decrease the pH of rainwater and in that case, we classify it as acidic rain. Okay. So, here we are having the answer as 2 and 4 only B. Yes, all of you are correct. B here will be the right answer. Okay. Then, see again, this same thing which I have explained that when the SOx and NOx, when they are excess in amount, then they can lead to formation of this acidic rain. Okay. But even the normal rain has a pH of about 5.6. This is something which you should keep in mind. Even the normal rainfall which is there, it is also slightly acidic, but when the pH of rainfall is again below this 5.6, then we classify it as acid rain. Okay. So when SOx and NOx are there in excess amount, then we can have pH as 4.2 or 4.4. Okay. And that is what we call as acid rain. Okay. Now, let's see another question. This is a famous area of UPSC. They are asking questions on the basis of certain terms. Okay. And here, we have got one such term. Can you answer this question? What is blue carbon? Okay. They have again asked this question on simple thing. What is blue carbon? And here, the options are carbon captured by ocean and coastal ecosystem, carbon sequestrated in forest biomass and agriculture, agricultural soils, Carbon contained in petroleum and natural gas, carbon present in the atmosphere. Okay. So, four options are here. You have to simply find out what is blue carbon. Now, this is a common area. They give you certain terms. Like last year, you might have seen there were questions on this Miyawaki method, what it is. Okay. Then they have asked about bio rock technology. Okay. So, these terms are simply mentioned there, and then you have to tell what it is related to. So here, yes, 
you have given answers that it will be A. That is correct. It is carbon captured by ocean and coastal ecosystem. Okay. So, this is one such area. Okay. Now, when you are looking at this blue carbon, you should also know that this year certain more things are new. Okay. Like blue hydrogen and green hydrogen, they are very much in news. And even gray hydrogen or other types of hydrogen are also there. So, when we are talking about this gray hydrogen, what does it mean? It means in the process of formation of the hydrogen fuel, we have taken the electricity from the non-renewable, so sorry, from the non-renewable sources. Okay. And in the process, CO2 has been emitted. Okay. So, when in the production of hydrogen fuel, certain greenhouse gases are released into the atmosphere, it can be termed as gray hydrogen. Okay. Here we have been using the natural gas. Okay. Now, suppose that when we talk about blue hydrogen, okay, here there is one thing which you have to understand. It is not more related to the oceanic ecosystem. Rather than that, here is simply simple concept that we are taking again the non-renewable sources, but we are doing a very important thing that is underground storage. So, here it is about carbon sequestration. We are capturing the carbon and we are storing it underground. Okay. So, the emissions which has happened during this, that period, it has been stored underground. Okay. So, there is lesser emission of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. Okay. And then, we have this green hydrogen also. When we talk about this green hydrogen, here it means we have taken we have taken this electricity from the renewable sources. So, it is green electricity. Here, the emission is not there. Okay. Here, the emission would be at very little or almost negligible level in the entire process. So, this hydrogen fuel which is produced here, it will be called as green hydrogen. Okay. So, this is again one term. Now, it is not related to the blue carbon part, but this has been there in the news in the last one, two years. And especially, we have got this national hydrogen mission also. Okay. So, at, at this point of time, you should know about the classification of different types of hydrogen. Okay. Now, let's see one more thing. Let's see, uh, this were the, these were the five questions which we have taken for today. Okay. They are the five questions. We have talked about the blue carbon. We have talked about the important uh, pollutants which are there. We have even talked about the pollutants in the water and then we have talked about coral reefs and we have even talked about the Environment Protection Act. Okay. So, on daily basis, now we are going to take certain questions from here. From Monday to Friday, we will meet at the same time and we will discuss certain previous year questions and the related topics with them. Even we will try to tell you about the most probable topics for this year. Okay. So, meet you tomorrow. Thank you very much. All the best.